So I'm out here in the Pittsburgh, and uh, I'm working on a game called Angry Bots, which features a lot of robots and sounds of steel. And I figured, what better place to record some sounds of steel than the city of steel itself? So you see this steel railing. I'm gonna I have my backpack and I have my field recorder, some drumsticks, some metal objects. I'm gonna hit it a few times and see what sounds we can come up with. I also have my boots to record some footstep sounds. So it's too noisy right now, but later on tonight I'm gonna come back and uh, the goal is to take uh, the environment around me and make some fun sounds out of it. So let's get to work. this demo, I'll be using Pure Data, a visual programming language that allows you to program by creating objects and making connections between them with wires instead of writing lines of code. The game audio engine itself was developed by Leonard Paul at the School of Video Game Audio. What I'll be doing is creating and connecting patches within Pure Data and using his game audio engine to connect my patches with the game. I started working on this game by just playing the game multiple times repeatedly and taking everything in. The visuals, the gameplay, the enemies. After I've played it for a while, I'll play it again, but I'll start taking note of every sound in the game and putting it onto an Excel spreadsheet. Once I have this sheet, I'll start thinking about sounds in terms of layers that I'll create or record. When I first attempted the machine gun sound, I used a loop that sounded like this. So if you listen, you can tell there's a certain rhythm in the sound that really sounds unnatural. So I didn't like this loop and I ended up throwing it out. What I opted to do instead was to experiment with the Metro object in PD. The Metro object is just an object that sends a message at periodic intervals. In this case, one-tenth of a second. So every one-tenth of a second, the Metro object is going to trigger the individual sample layers. I developed these sample layers by chopping up individual bursts of machine gun fire out of a longer sample of the machine gun firing for a certain amount of time. So combined with the Metro object, you get the following sound. The cool thing about this sound is because the Metro object is sending out the time, you can actually change the speed of fire. And within a reasonable range, it sounds pretty good. To best sync the rate of fire with the visuals, I decided on a speed of 100 milliseconds. One of the sounds that I had the most fun implementing was the mech sound. So the engine, the footsteps, everything. When this object receives a footstep tag from the game, it triggers multiple sample layers at one time. I also added a delay line to it and attached it to another object that fires off a mechanical sound so that it creates a certain mechanical rhythm when the mech is walking. To complete the mech sound, I wanted to add an engine. And the challenge with adding an engine is this. You need a way to smoothly transition between the engine powering on and the engine continuously running, which will loop as long as the mech is running in the game. So what I did as a workaround was the following. When the first mech footstep tag is received from the game, it turns on the power up engine. There's also a delay and this delay is roughly the length of the engine power-up sample. So essentially, once the engine power-up sample is finished playing, it transitions to the continuous engine that loops throughout the remainder of the mech movement. The music for this game alternates between three levels of intensity, low, medium, and high. And the intensity level actually corresponds to how much you're firing the gun in the game. And for each intensity level, there's actually three variations so that it doesn't sound too 
repetitive, and the end result sounds like this. 